Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the NJ4S School District webinar. I'm Sandy Starr, Assistant Commissioner of the Division of Family and Community Partnerships. And as we move closer to launching the New Jersey Statewide Student Support Services Network, we wanted to provide you with the most recent information regarding the program and provide an opportunity for you to ask questions. I encourage you to put questions in the chat during our presentation, and we'll create an FAQ document following this webinar uh, and have the FAQ as well as this recording uh, posted to our NJ4S website. Next slide, please. So we wanted to cover what we believe are the most pressing questions that you have. What does NJ4S offer? Who is eligible to receive services? How do I access those services? And who is delivering those services? And we will introduce you uh, to our NJ4S hubs in this next hour. We also have a number of frequently asked questions that we will take you through. These are questions that have been raised by schools fairly regularly. And then we'll provide you with a general timeline for next steps, and we'll have plenty of time to ask questions at the end. Next slide, please. What we've looked to create through NJ4S is a statewide network of supports for students and their families offered to all New Jersey school districts. It recognizes the whole family, in addition to the individual student, as the focus of support and to increase academic achievement as well as emotional safety and well being. We wanted a program that provides a standard set of supports and services with local adaptations that leverage the best approaches the field has to offer so that no matter where a New Jersey student lives, they can be assured of accessing a core set of high quality services for programming. It involves communities in the design and implementation and integrates programming within communities with schools at the center of a broader network of available services and supports for students. And it intentionally integrates with existing statewide and community-based services and supports for school-aged youth to maximize public funding and avoid duplication of services. Next slide, please. NJ4S is part of a multi-pronged approach to address a complex public health problem. Addressing the youth mental health crisis calls for a full continuum of services from prevention, early intervention, treatment, and crisis intervention. No one program, approach, or entity can do this alone. NJ4S is an important addition to this continuum, designed to provide school prevention programming, targeted evidence-based prevention, and brief counseling and early intervention services. NJ4S is not meant to provide ongoing behavioral health treatment, crisis intervention, or return to school clearances. Other components of the continuum are available to provide treatment services and crisis intervention services, including but certainly not limited to the Children's System of Care, the Mobile Crisis Response Unit, and the 988 Helpline. Next slide, please. So what does NJ4S provide? NJ4S provides three tiers of supports to students, their caregivers, and school personnel. Tier one supports, the column on the left, include universal prevention programming that benefits the whole school community. These programs are available from pre-K to grade 12 students, caregivers, and school staff. The programs can be delivered in person or virtually, either in school or in other community settings. Tier one programs can be delivered through school district-wide programming. They may take the form of workshops, webinars, assemblies, trainings, and evidence-based interventions or community efforts, such as workshops held at libraries or community centers or tutoring occurring at family success centers. Focus areas for interventions include mental health and well being, such as stress reduction, recognizing signs and symptoms of distress, or encouraging help seeking behavior. It includes developing positive peer relationships, job readiness, and career exploration, or addressing classroom management or dealing with disruptive behaviors. Some practical examples 
include recorded video directed at high school students on how to cope with test anxiety, or an in-person event at a community library for parents to recognize signs and symptoms of anxiety and depression in their children. As with all services, hubs will design tier one programming together with their advisory group, including leveraging community partnerships to implement programming in collaboration with trusted community organizations, businesses, faith-based institutions, and the like. Tier one services do not require an application to an NJ4S hub. Students, caregivers, and school personnel will be able to go to a public-facing NJ4S webpage that will be launched and publicized in September to learn about upcoming events that each hub is offering, whether it is an in-person or virtual event, and if in-person, the location, the time, and if registration is required based on perhaps the size restrictions of the venue. Tier two services, the services in the middle column, include evidence-based prevention programs typically delivered through group interventions by a trained prevention consultant. Focus areas for tier two include substance use prevention, sexual health and pregnancy prevention, suicide prevention, anti-bullying, violence prevention, and other prevention focused areas of need determined by youth, school, and community where the hub is located. Hubs will develop their menu of tier two evidence-based prevention programs in consultation with their advisory group. For certain specialized populations, hubs may design adaptations to evidence-based programs or design a custom program. However, such program innovations are subject to review and approval by DCF Division of Family and Community Partnerships, also Office of Family Support Services, and will require hubs to partner with DCF for additional evaluation and monitoring of efficacy and quality. Application for Tier 2 evidence-based programs is made by public, middle, and high schools and the K-8 schools, their upper grades, using the NJ4S application system to be launched at the end of this month. A school representative will be able to complete an online application that will be received by the hub. Hub staff will connect with the school on a consultation to make certain that there is clarity regarding the request. For example, a school may indicate that in their application that they have noted an uptick in fights and would like programming to address the increase in violence. The hub will consult with the school representative to better understand the school's needs and target population and discuss potential programs, determine if there is an already established program in the community that could provide violence prevention programming, and indicate what time, space, and materials are necessary from the school and verify that the school will collect and have on hand the required consent to participate forms. From there, the program is scheduled, whether through the hub or through a community partner. Tier three services, the column on the right, includes assessment and brief individual clinical interventions to youth in distress to improve overall mental health and well being or to facilitate resolution of an immediate problem and allow for continued classroom success. These are short-term services, which are provided while the youth is being referred and connected to a community provider to support ongoing mental health needs, whether that be a referral for a further evaluation or ongoing mental health counseling. Services may be provided in person at the school or via telehealth, and after-school hours and appointments must be made available. As with Tier 2, Tier 3 services are available to all public, middle, and high schools and the upper grades of K-8 schools in the vicinage. But service delivery is dependent upon capacity and prioritization will be necessary. Again, evidence-based interventions offered in Tier 3 are to be selected in consultation with the Hub Advisory Group and will be subject to DCF approval. Please note that schools with a school-based youth services program are not eligible to apply for Tier 2 and Tier 3 services through the NJ4S application system. These 86 schools have prevention programming and brief counseling services already available within the school building. Additionally, prevention and counseling hub staff are available to consult with school faculty. Next slide, please. It is anticipated that there will be greater demand for services than the hubs will have capacity to deliver. Student mental health and wellness needs are greater than any one program can address. 
It is important to recognize that NJ4S is an important and new addition to an existing landscape of services addressed to youth and family mental health and well being. It is not intended to replace existing programs and services or to disrupt already established relationships between schools and community services. Hub staff are building knowledge and establishing relationships with community programs and services with which to connect students and their families. Where hubs are delivering services directly to middle and high schools, the hubs will prioritize services to school districts based on the school district needs index. The index and methodology report can be found on the department's NJ4S webpage. And in an upcoming slide, we'll show you the link uh, for that webpage. But quite frankly, if you just Bing or Google NJ4S, it will be the first link to pop up. The School District Needs Index was created by our Division of Applied Research and Evaluation, taking a broad range of municipality and school specific indicators, spanning just as an example, student social, economic and academic outcomes, social determinants of health, community violence, maternal and infant health, and many more uh, uh, indicators. Next slide, please. So who is providing the service? 15 hubs have been established, one in each vicinage, which aligns with the structure of the children's system of care. Each hub is staffed by a director, assistant director, prevention consultants, including supervisors, licensed clinicians, and support staff. In total, across the 15 hubs, 199 prevention consultants, 36 prevention consultant supervisors, and 64 licensed clinicians will be employed. The hub staffing and award amounts vary from hub to hub based on the number of students in high need school districts in each vicinage. That staffing constellation speaks to the emphasis on prevention programming for NJ4S. Hubs will be integrated with other formal support systems serving youth and families. For example, with the New Jersey Children's System of Care, with the Pediatric Psychiatric Collaborative, and with Family Success Center Network, just, just to name a few. Next slide, please. So we have a number of representatives of the NJ4S hubs or their managing agencies uh, with us today uh, on this webinar, and I'd like to introduce them. Uh, so if our um, representatives could make sure that your hands are raised so that we can make sure that you're unmuted, um, we can go down our list and um, uh, give you a chance to introduce yourselves and uh, say a few words about the hub if you'd like. Um, and then we're going to hear from two of the hubs, Essex and Middlesex County Vicinages, uh, in a little bit more in a little bit more detail. And I will also tell you that we know that some of our hubs are not available to be with us today. They were with us yesterday uh, on yesterday's webinar. But I'll go down the list just in case I've I don't want to miss anybody. So our first uh, uh, vicinage is the Atlantic and Cape May vicinage, Ascenda. Kathy? Hi, uh, my name is Kathy Barreto. I'm the director for the Passaic County Hub. Um, our managing agency is uh, NJCDC, New Jersey Community Development Corporation. Um, we've been off to a very busy start and we're excited to um, essentially just collaborate with all of the um, school districts throughout our county and really implement some good prevention services throughout your school communities. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks, Kathy. Sure. In Bergen uh, County Vicinage, Children's Aid and Family Services. Okay, I'm assuming that we don't have someone from Bergen today. I believe they were with us yesterday. Uh, Burlington County Legal uh, Legacy Treatment Services. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Omida Pope. 
I'm one of the supervising prevention consultants for the NJ4S of Burlington County uh, under Legacy Treatment Services. Uh, we are getting off to a pretty good start. We've been doing some really good onboarding of staffing, training, and developing curriculums for a lot of our Tier 1 services. So we're excited to be a part of this new initiative. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And from Camden County, the Center for Family Services. Hello, everyone. My name is Sherelle Crook. I am the um, NJ4S Camden County um, Director um, for Camden County. We are, you know, all to a great start as well. I'm um, definitely um, doing a lot of um, training for our evidence and based practices, making sure that we're ready to kind of hit the ground running for this upcoming September. Um, and we're definitely looking forward to our first two um, events, tier one events that we have planned, our back to school event, um, that's going to be in Camden County on September the 7th. Um, and then we have another utility assistance um, event that's going to be on October the um, 3rd and 5th. Um, so we're just looking forward to, you know, just hitting the ground running and we're um, grateful to be a part of the initiative as well. Thank you, Sherelle. We'll come back to Essex County and Family Connections and move to Hudson County Vicinage Partners in Prevention. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fabiola Lazo. I'm the Assistant Director for the Hudson County Hub. Um, and I'm excited to also be part of this initiative. Um, our hub is currently off to a wonderful start. So we're looking forward to going forward. Thank you very much, Fabiola. Uh, Mercer County Catholic Charities. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Lavaglio, the NJ4S hub director here in Mercer County. And uh, we're very excited to be a part of uh, this program. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks, Michael. And we'll come back to Middlesex County as well. And we're now Monmouth uh, County, Preferred Behavioral Health Group. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Liza De Jesus, Director of Monmouth County Vicinage 9 under the leadership of Preferred Behavioral Health. We have about half of our staff hired. They have already been out um, attending different community events and making everyone aware that New Jersey uh, for us is here and that we're ready to serve. We've been throughout Monmouth County and look forward to working within and outside of the school districts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Morris and Sussex County Vicinage, the Mental Health Association of Essex and Morris. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Tracy Capicelli. I'm the director um, of the Morris and Sussex Hub from the Mental Health Association. Um, we are very excited and we're off to a great start. Um, we are scheduled to go to a variety of community events and we have scheduled over 19 tier one services already. Thank you, Tracy. In Passaic County, the New Jersey Community Development Corporation. That was me, Sandy, Kathy Barreto oh, yeah. um, for the Passaic County. Yep, thank you. I'm sorry about that, Kathy. No, no worries. Thank you. Union County Prevention Links. Uh, good afternoon, Nafisa Downs for the Union Hub here. Um, looking to uh, uh, get the school year started, so we're excited about this program. Thank you. Thank you, Nafisa. Somerset, Hunterton, and Warren Counties, the Center for Family Services. Right, we'll move on to Ocean Preferred Behavioral Health. I'm Sandy, and everybody else. I'm Dave Seeger from Preferred Behavioral Health and the director of the Ocean County NJ Forest Program. Um, happy to say we're about 70% staff now. We are uh, have a very lively and active advisory group. I just got done meeting with them. We have boots out on the ground or you know, prevention consultants are out meeting with schools. We've made contact with nearly every school in Ocean County at this point. And, getting a lot of uh, great feedback and excitement uh, around the program. So but we, we're, we're happy to hopefully start, you know, offering full services uh, by, by September. Great. Thank you very much, Dave. 
and uh, Ascenda again, Gloucester, Cumberland, and Salem counties. Okay, so we had some folks on yesterday who are not with us today. So if we could hey. go, to, oh, sorry, go ahead. Apologies, I just received an invite <laughs> to unmute. I am from, uh, I said, Asenda, uh, representing, representing Gloucester, Cumberland, and Salem County. Uh, my name is Dara Bachman, and I'm the Assistant Director for Gloucester, Cumberland, and Salem's NJ Forest Vicinage 15. Uh, we are making great connections. We have already partnered with all of our family success centers, and now we are making our way, introducing ourselves to the school district and the school staff to start our tier one services as of September. Thank you. We look forward to working with you all. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dara. Well, we just wanted to put, if we couldn't put faces to um, uh, to the uh, uh, the hubs, we at least wanted to get some names and voices to the hubs because this is very real. Uh, folks, as you can hear, are uh, really working hard to stand up uh, programming and be ready for the start of the school year. So we're, we're all very excited to have everybody on board and, and moving forward. Well, we have an opportunity now to hear from, from two hubs in a little bit more uh, detail. So if we could go to the next slide. And I'll introduce Diane Travers uh, from the Essex County vicinage with Family Connections. Can I turn this over to you, Diane? Thank you, Sandy. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Diane Travers and I am the Essex County Hub Director. And just like all of the other hubs have been sharing, we're excited and feeling like we're getting off to a great start with NJ4S. Um, just to give you some background about how we really determined what our needs were uh, in terms of the programs and services that we'd be providing, we did a needs assessment and our needs assessment revealed a lot of really uh, important information for us in informing our services. Overall, Throughout our needs assessment, the individuals who contributed to it indicated that mental health and wellness is overwhelmingly the number one need for all of our youth right now. We had 65% of the people list this as the top need. In addition, the other needs were life skills, suicide prevention, and trauma-informed treatment. When we broke it down to school staff, we found that our teachers and our school staff are saying, they need mindfulness, stress management techniques for themselves. They also, over 73% indicated they need more information on the mental health needs of the youth in their schools. 66% indicated they need information on the impact that trauma has on the youth in our schools here in Essex County. Additionally, we found that our parents are struggling as well. They're indicating that not only did they want more information on the mental health needs of their youth, but they themselves feel they need information on mental health and referrals. 69% said that their youth are struggling and they need some support around their mental health needs. In addition, 60% of our parents said they want more information on the impact of trauma on their youth. The next area was uh, stress reduction and mindfulness strategies as well for parents. So we're really hearing a lot of consistency across the board, but we're going to continue to work with our schools to identify additional needs. And obviously we can pivot and uh, offer additional services to support those needs. So to start out with, we are, we are in a really great place with our staffing pattern. Uh, we're a larger hub, so we're hiring 32 prevention consultants, and we have 28 fully onboarded, three offers out there, one more interview to go, hopefully. So we've got a lot of staff that are ready to uh, get out there and start providing the services. Um, in addition, we've got 50% of our clinicians, five, hired, they're ready to go to start providing those clinical services immediately to the youth once the applications come in. We're available right now for any schools in Essex County to do tier one presentations. We've already got a number scheduled throughout um, back to school events, as well as teacher in services. Uh, some of the topics that are being requested are suicide prevention. Uh, and one of our uh, high needs districts also asked for some information, uh, presentation on the needs of LGBTQIA plus youth for their teachers. 
So we are ready to go. Um, and so I think our, our needs here in Essex County are might be a little bit more unique being a highly populated county. Um, and so one of the things that I think is very important for schools to be aware of is that we will be complying with any of your requests in Essex County um, in terms of whether memorandums of understanding need to be fully executed with your Board of Eds. Uh, we've got a template already created, so if you need that, we can send that out. In addition, we do do background checks on any staff hired by Family Connections, but if there are additional requirements such as Board of Ed fingerprinting, um, we are ready to comply with that as well, but we really need that information from you so that we can be ready to go when you start submitting your applications. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. If we could have the next slide, please. Thanks, Diane. I'd also like to introduce Ruby Sikhan with the Middlesex Vicinage with uh, Rutgers University Behavioral Health Care. Hi, can everybody. You? Good afternoon. My name is Ruby Sikhan. I am overseeing the hub for Middlesex County. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit about our sort of staff makeup. We're a little bit smaller than Essex, not as big as Diane's sort of program, but we're a team of 19 staff that is comprised of clinicians and prevention specialists that are gonna provide the services in the community and at the schools. Um, as a county, you know, we have 42 districts and they're broken down by high needs, moderate needs and low needs, but all the services will be provided across all of those, uh, those schoolings. Um, when we looked at, you know, conversations and feedbacks and surveys that we've done um, within the county with schools or with communities and parents and students, you know, we highlighted sort of four main areas that really needed um, assistance or additional support. Um, a lot of the initial support comes in the form of mental health services, right? Specifically in the increase of cases or students or information with anxiety or depression, similar to what Diane said, also trauma-informed care, understanding how certain trauma that's impacted families or schools or communities are really impacting us on a different level, individually as, as a community as well. Um, and then there was a lot of requests for creating sort of awareness, education on help-seeking behaviors, um, some sort of prevention work related to bullying, suicide prevention, substance use, that was all a part of it. There was a significant focus on providing support for like loss and grief. Um, and that is in many ways of loss, loss of a relationship, loss of a parent from two parent to one parent that came up a lot in terms of providing some sort of education and support in those areas. Um, a huge need was also identified in finding resources outside of schools and within the community, services, providers that can sort of help fill up some of the gaps that are needed. Um, we know that there's wait lists and we know that there's, um, you know, not enough services or people just aren't made aware of certain services. So maybe creating some awareness and knowledge and sharing what's out there was also another need sort of that was identified. Um, and particularly for schools, sort of classroom management skills, you know, students are coming back, especially post pandemic, their needs are a lot more higher and sort of helping the schools and school personnel with sort of the tools and tips on how they can better support those students, um, as well as staff, uh, personal self care for them, right, really looking at similar to Diane mindfulness techniques and tips that they can use to sort of reduce their own anxieties, feel like they are actually, you know, making a difference in doing the work. Um, and then also just professional developments on, on various topics just so that they feel better equipped in providing the services. Um, the services that we will be offering to start are very similar to some of the other sort of hubs, a lot of tier one services. Um, we've had a lot of requests already for us to just come in and sort of present on what we will be offering. Um, a part of you know, the referral process is gonna be initiated by schools. So maybe helping schools figure out and walk them through how to make referrals, right? Some, some districts may not know exactly what they need, but they know that they need something. So we can be of assistance in terms of helping you figure out, you know, what would be the best type of services that you're looking for. Um, the tier one services are the calendar of events, right? That we're gonna be offering to the schools and in the community. Um, and that's in the form of webinars or presentations on mental health topics, suicide prevention. Um, and then particularly some requests have already come in 
sort of a professional development, maybe uh, how to use the Columbia suicide severity scale. That's been a request that's come from a district. Um, a suicide prevention topic has come up. Uh, Trauma-informed classroom management, a presentation for sort of school staff. So these are types of services that have already been um, made as request, um, sort of informally, um, and then we've already connected with many schools on sort of back to school events, and even within the community, working on you know kind of being available and ready to show up some at some other uh, community based back to school events. Um, from a hub perspective, I think there's some some things that are really important just to keep in mind um, that the referrals are really for the tier two and tier three services. That's more of that sort of brief short-term group or brief short-term individual sort of therapy has to be initiated by the school. So really learning how to make a referral, understanding that process, right, is, is going to be really key. Um, the services don't need to be provided at school, right? That's the whole idea of the hub and spokes model. We're the hub. Services aren't provided here. They can be provided at school, but they don't have to be provided at school. They can be provided at any one of the, the community-based spokes, right? Um, the referral status update, the turnaround time, it all is going to depend on the type of service that you're requesting when it comes to tier two and tier three. But usually it's a very quick turnaround time in terms of, you know, 72 hours, you should get notified about who's available, when they can come out, when they can provide this service. Um, similar to Diane, any sort of background check information that your particular district, your particular school needs, we will be willing to sort of share, you know, our background checks that we've already done um, to move forward to sort of like facilitate some of the some of the background stuff that's needed, particularly with certain districts. Um, also, just to know that the and you guys will learn this, but the tier two and tier three really need the application sort of to be done for each individual service. I think, you know, sometimes as districts, we might feel that all of this would be great. We want to sort of apply for all of these things, but it really is an individual sort of application for each service that you're looking to sort of gather. Um, it's also important, I think, for all the hubs, but particularly Middlesex, to know that we've been really deliberate um, and intentional in who we're hiring. Middlesex is a diverse county. Um, so we want to make sure that we as a team at, at Rutgers are reflective of that same county, but also that our community advisory board, which is made up of members of the community, family, students, are also representative of the diverse needs of the county. So um, we're excited to already, you know, start working with you guys more closely. We're open to, you know, connecting with you offline if you have individual questions, but, you know, we're, we're excited to to get the ball rolling. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Ruby. And I, I think you can see listening to Ruby and Diane and our presenters that we had on uh, the webinar yesterday, why we're so excited about getting underway. There's been an incredible amount of work and thought going into the programming and relationship building uh, that the hubs have uh, undertaken to date and will be continuing. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And we're, we're all very excited. Um, I also um, think that we might have missed a couple of folks as we were trying to do introductions uh, with this technology. And so I'd like to kind of come back to Linda uh, Vendome with the Somerset, Hunterton and Warren uh, vicinage, if we can, please. And the audio is not working. Okay, well, Linda, I know that you're there. Uh, and we do have representation uh, today uh, from, uh, from the uh, uh, Somerset, Hunterdon, and Warren Hub as, as well. Uh, and uh, Karan Greer? I think... Hi, <laughs> Corey Andrew, I'm the Supervising Prevention Specialist for Cape May County, and I'm here with our director, Dr. Jacqueline, and our Atlantic County uh, Supervising Prevention Specialist as well, Tamia. Fantastic. Corey, I'm so sorry that we missed you a little bit earlier. It's the joys of our technology. <laughs> no, that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> we just didn't know if it was like something we didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> None of us understand. It's only been years. Thank you very much for being here and joining us today.
Thank, Thank you. you. We're very, very excited for the programs, for the schools, the community, mm -hmm. and the children. Um, this is uh, very, very different than anything anyone has ever seen. And there are so many possibilities for uh, good, positive changes. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, if we can go to the next slide, please. All right, some frequently asked questions. This is not as nearly as exciting as what you've just heard. I, I want you to know that. But I, I think that there are a number of questions, as I said earlier, that have come up uh, on more than one occasion. And so let's see if we can answer some of them for you uh, at the front end. Um, first question, my school district is in a more rural part of the state or county. All of the resources typically go to urban, more densely populated parts of the region. Will NJ4S do the same? Uh, no. First, NJ4S hubs provide tier one programming universally in the region to all school districts. Tier two and tier three support will be provided to districts that request it based on need as identified in the school district needs index created in response to Public Law 2021, Chapter 323. And that index controls for population size. So it basically uh, evens out uh, the, the circumstances in terms of, of population density. And just to be clear about that, that law, it's directed at ensuring that students and their families have access to individual family and group clinical mental health counseling. This law also requires the Department of Children and Families to set metrics for high priority school districts and to ensure that programs, one, maintain partnerships with community mental health providers and other existing resources, and our hubs are certainly doing that, and two, identify and train students and staff on identifying the signs of mental health conditions and addressing risk factors that may impact student mental health, and our hubs will be doing that as well. Question two. My school district already has similar programming. Will our existing programming be taken away? No. First, participation in NJ4S is optional. Tier one services will be available for any student who wants to participate. School districts may opt to apply for NJ4S tier two and tier three support, but existing DCFs, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, existing um, uh, programs um, uh, should remain in place. We're not looking to replace programming. We're looking to supplement existing programming. Won't it be too hard for students to travel to a hub to get services? Services will be pushed out to spoke locations in the community. Schools are a spoke. So the services will be offered at schools, community centers, and other places identified through hub advisory board input. But, but services do not occur at the hub. Hubs are the administrative entity that house the clinicians and uh, prevention uh, consultants who will be deployed to those schools or other community spokes. Next slide, please. What is a spoke? I think I've just answered it, but any place within the community where youth and families feel most comfortable to receive services from the hubs. And the school, again, is considered a spoke. How do I connect to the hub? Schools contact the hub through the NJ4S application system. Tier two and tier three service requests can only be made by the school. Question six, why can't elementary schools receive tier two and tier three programming? The program, NJ4S, is staffed for middle and high school students. Developmentally, programming is really focusing more on teens. This doesn't mean to imply that elementary schools are not in need of services. It would be great to see a range of evidence-based social emotional learning programs available and implemented throughout elementary schools. Currently, NJ4S does not have this capacity. As we indicated earlier, no one program can deliver everything that is needed. Next slide, please. What if I already have services in my school? Can I still apply? Well, as we said earlier, if you already have a school-based youth service program in your school, you will not be able to apply for NJ4S tier two and tier three services. 
because those services will already be available in those 86 schools. Beyond that, consultation with the hub will determine if the hub is best suited to deliver a service or if an existing entity is better able to deliver a service. And remember, NJ4S is not meant to replace existing services, but to augment them. When can I start applying for services? Well, we're gonna be going live in September. First step for, for a school to uh, apply for services is to um, identify a school representative that will have access to the information system. Uh, second step is to check out the NJ4S training videos on YouTube, and those are coming at the end of the month. And once you become a school representative for the NJ4S information system, you will be notified when those training videos uh, come up. Uh, I think that we're expecting it to be around August 29th, day or two plus or minus. If you are a school or district representative, check your email for a login access and then explore the system. And then you're ready to submit applications. Next slide, please. So just in terms of being a school representative or a district representative, principals of public high schools, middle schools, and the upper grades of K-8 schools uh, must identify and submit a school representative's contact details to the NJ4S information system in order to apply for evidence-based prevention programs and brief counseling interventions. Superintendents or their delegates must register themselves or a delegate in order to, uh, to access the dashboard that shows the district's applications and services. All we need through a survey monkey that's been established is for you to go in, identify yourself as either a school or a principal or a superintendent or a district representative. And we just need the first name, last name, title and email address of a primary and secondary um, representative and you're good to go. This information must be front loaded into the information system in order to access the training vi videos on how to use the system and then to begin to apply for services. Once those representatives are front loaded and in the system, those individuals can be changed uh, by the school or by the uh, superintendent. Next slide, please. How do I use the IT system? Again, those trainings will be available within days and representatives will be notified when those trainings become available. And what data can the schools and superintendents see? School and school district representatives will have a dashboard available to indicate what has been requested, the status of that request, what's been delivered. We actually have, a, that's a, the short answer. We actually have a great deal of information uh, that will be um, presented in a dashboard. And we're really anxious to hear your feedback, uh, what's useful, what might be missing, and what we could add into the future. Next slide, please. So just in terms of go, the go live timeline, uh, for this month in, in August, uh, we're working to get schools and school districts to uh, uh, submit representative names to get loaded into our information system. Uh, we'll then have NJ4S application training videos released uh, to explain how to use the information system. It's pretty darned intuitive. It's not difficult. Um, we also are establishing a, a or actually expanding a, a, a help desk uh, to respond to the uh, NJ4S system. So for those of you who would have trouble logging on, uh, there will be help available. Uh, and that's occurring this month. Uh, come September, uh, go live, um, schools, middle and high schools, will be able to begin to submit applications. Um, our public facing webpage will also go live. Uh, and again, we will, we will communicate when that occurs uh, and make sure that it's widely known. Uh, and then as you heard um, uh, from our representatives from the hubs, um, we're fairly well staffed at this point, but there are still there are still openings. We are still working to get to 100% uh, staffing for the hubs. Again, 199 prevention consultants, 36 prevention consultant supervisors, and 64 clinicians. And at this time, the hubs are continuing to work to fill those open positions uh, as a result of staffing challenges that face the behavioral health workforce. 
both in New Jersey and quite frankly, it's throughout the rest of the country. And recruitment remains a top priority of the hubs and we are making incredible progress uh, in, in getting to full capacity. Uh, that work will continue through September, maybe even into a little bit of October. But by October, we know that we'll have a lot of feedback from schools and constituents, and we'll be working to refine and adapt uh, to the feedback that, uh, that we've received. Next slide, please. So uh, as promised earlier, we do have an NJ4S webpage, um, uh, which uh, is, is listed here. Uh, and again, you can just Google NJ4S and it'll pop up. There are several tabs on the webpage, uh, NJ4S communication assets, NJ4S school district needs, and NJ4S state advisory group. Uh, I'd encourage you to take a look at those, those pages and um, uh, uh, we um, uh, can uh, uh, appreciate your feedback there as well. We also are using DOE broadcasts, Department of Education broadcasts that uh, occur each week. Uh, to also get the word out directly to uh, to schools uh, about any next steps related to uh, uh, NJ4S. And so that's another good place to, to check for updated information. Next slide, please. And we'd like to open up the floor for questions. Um, we'll check out uh, what may be in the chat. You can raise your hand. Also, if you have questions that you don't raise now, but you think of later, we have an email address, nj4sfeedback at dcfnj.gov, dcf.nj.gov. And um, we would welcome your, your feedback uh, through that email address as well for additional questions. So let me go to the um, chat. See what we have there. Or am I going to Q&A, Jason? Maybe I'm supposed to go to Q&A. Here we go. Will you provide a copy of the PowerPoints so that we can share it with the school district? Yeah, this is actually recorded and it will be on our NJ4S webpage. So everybody will have uh, uh, access. And I believe a transcript will also be provided. How can I request for a representative to come in to the, discuss what services NJ4S provides? Um, so um, uh, if, um, if you can uh, email us um, your, um, your county, we can, uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the hub would love to speak to you about uh, the services that they have to offer and they're gonna be interested in what your school actually needs. So we just need to know what your dis, your your uh, county is, and we'll get you connected with the uh, appropriate uh, hub. How will tier one services such as presentations and school wide assemblies be provided by hub staff, or will we be able to access funding to pay for outside assemblies related to mental health and well being? So the services that the hubs are be, are providing uh, directly are free. Um, when you go to the um, uh, tier one website, uh, you will see that each of the hubs is identified um, by, by county, by vicinage, uh, and you'll click there and uh, any programming that is upcoming that will be provided or anything that may be online uh, will be identified there uh, and you'll be able to access those, those services. So just, just um, uh, be patient because uh, information about that uh, public facing webpage is forthcoming. Is there contact information for our local hub to obtain the MOA from Michael? Um, if, if you use the NJ um, uh, 4S feedback, uh, we'll make sure that the appropriate hub uh, gets, gets information. Are New Jersey approved private schools for students with disabilities uh, eligible to participate? Um, that's a great question. I mean, private schools in general um, are not participating uh, in the tier two and tier three services. 
Um, if there is some type of an exception that I may not be fully cognizant of um, with disabilities, we'll check on that and be back, be back in touch with you. It'll be part of our frequently asked questions response. When are the emails being sent for login access to the schools and district reps? Um, uh, I expect that it'll be uh, right at the very end of, of the uh, month of, of August. Is there anything in place for Spanish speaking families? Would any of the hubs like to address that? Ruby. Yes, hi. Uh I am Dara Bachman again from uh, Vicinage 15, Gloucester, Cumberland, Salem County. We do, during our hiring process, we are very mindful to onboard some uh, Spanish speaking individuals, including scheduling coordinator, just to navigate the things, navigate the conversations and all the materials we are creating, we are also translating it in Spanish. So all the newsletters, all the services will be available, will be available in English and Spanish. Through our hub. Thank you, Dara. And I see Ruby uh, Seekon's uh, hand is also raised, as well as Diane. Yeah, I, I was going to, similar to what Dara said, that we, a part of our hiring process, made sure that, you know, we're hiring people that sort of, again, are reflective of the community. So people that speak Spanish and some other languages are definitely there. And we're going to do similar, sort of make sure that any materials that are given are also, you know, translated and provided in, in those languages. Thank you, Ruby and Diane. Yes, and so in Essex County, we're hiring um, seven uh, prevention consultants who are bilingual, and we've already filled all those positions. They both speak, um, we've got five Spanish speakers and two French Creole speakers, and in addition, uh, three bilingual clinicians, and we've already hired one Spanish speaking clinician. Very good, thank you. So you can see that, you know, New Jersey is one of the most diverse states in the country. And as you can hear, hubs have gone uh, to um, uh, great lengths to ensure that um, uh, the uh, uh, folks that are being brought on board to provide services are uh, as diverse as possible as well. How long will it take to get login information after registering? Well, for, for those schools and, and um, districts that uh, we're able to um, uh, provide information to the survey in time for the um, uh, the August 22nd um, uh, upload. Uh, you should be receiving uh, information uh, at the end of this month. Um, and um, uh, we will continue to do uh, probably weekly uploads um, as additional uh, schools and school districts register. So I would say generally it's going to be roughly a week. Uh, between the time that you upload information uh, and the time that you'll get a uh, uh, information about logging in. Can charter schools apply for NJ4S? Yes, uh, charter schools can apply for NJ4S. They're considered public schools. Uh, and it'll be important if you're a charter school to both uh, upload information in the uh, uh, principal or the school area, as well as the district or superintendent area of that, uh, of that survey. How are you determining need? Um, so again, there is a school district needs index that was created by our Division of Applied Research and Evaluation. Um, and uh, if you look at our NJ4S webpage, um, we have the, uh, the needs index um, uh, posted, as well as a report on the methodology used uh, for uh, creating that, uh, uh, the, the, the index. And I'd encourage you to start there, and then if there are questions, we can, we can certainly follow up. Can a universal MOU between DOE and DCF be executed to eliminate cumbersome startup time and local level for each district to obtain? I'm actually meeting with, with the Department of Education tomorrow, uh, and we're going to be discussing what we can do to streamline um, uh, uh, all of these kinds of issues wherever, wherever possible. So stay tuned. More to come. No more questions. 
any hands raised? Well, if there are no more questions, at least for now, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, again, if you have questions in the future or comments, please feel free to email njforsfeedback at dcf.nj.gov, uh, and we'll get back to you. Um, uh, otherwise, we're all looking forward to uh, the big kickoff of NJ4S, the beginning of September. Uh, and uh, excited to uh, uh, hear your feedback, both good and bad, so that we can uh, make the necessary adjustments and have a really successful pro program uh, for students in the state of New Jersey. Thank you very much.